In this road locus example, we are giving the characteristic equation of a unit feedback system. The characteristic equation is 1 plus k times a function of s. And this is the standard form of the root locus that we need for root locus analysis. We want the value of k to vary from 0 to infinity, and the root locus will represent the location of the poles of the closed loop system as k goes from 0 to infinity. The characteristic equation has three poles and no zero, so we have n minus m equals to 3. And the poles of this characteristic equation are given here, negative 2, negative 10, and negative 37, all real numbers. When you have an excess of three poles, we know that these poles go to infinity following asymptotes, and the angle of those asymptotes are theta 1 equals to plus 60 degrees, theta 2 is 180 degrees, and theta 3 is negative 60 degrees, or 300 degrees. The centroid of these asymptotes is calculated as the sum of poles minus the sum of zeros divided by n minus m, and this is negative 2, negative 10, negative 37, divided by 3, which is negative 16.33. Let's now locate the poles on the S-plane. We have three poles, negative 2, negative 10, and negative 37. The centroid of the asymptotes is at negative 16.33. So let's place it around here, negative 16.33. This is the value of alpha. One of the asymptotes go up at an angle of 60 degrees. The other one goes downwards at an angle of negative 60 degrees. And the third one goes to negative infinity because that has an angle of 180 degrees. Now, where is the root locus? The root locus is always to the left of an odd number of poles and zeros, which means that in this case, the root locus is between negative 2 and negative 10, and to the left of a negative 37. Because of that, we can immediately tell that a negative 37, this pole needs to go to negative infinity to use the 180 degree asymptote. There is no other possible solution. So this pole goes. to negative infinity. What happens to these two poles? Well, they'll come together because there is a root locus between them. And then they will break away from the real axis. One goes up, one goes down, and they will use this asymptote. Now, where exactly do these two poles come together and break away from the real axis? To find that point, we need to find the breakaway point. And to find that, we again set P of S equals to K. Replace P of S in this expression, isolate for it. P of S is negative S to the power of 3 plus 50S squared plus 500S plus 100. And now we take the derivative of P of S with respect to S. S to the power of 3 is 3S squared. 50S squared is 100S. 500s is 500, and 100 is 0. And now we set this to 0. This is now a second-order polynomial, easy to find the roots. And the roots here are s equals to negative 27.2, and s equals to negative 6.12. These are the potential breakaway or breaking points. Now that we have them, let's see if they are part of the root locus, starting with the first solution here, negative 27.2. Is that part of the root locus? No. That point is between negative 10 and negative 37, and this segment here, this part of the real axis, has no root locus. So this is not a breakaway, nor a breaking point, because it's not on the root locus. Is negative 6.12 part of the root locus? Yes, it's right here and is part of this segment of the root locus between negative 10 and negative 2. So this is the breakaway point. This is the point where these two poles will come to meet before they break away from the real axis and become imaginary numbers. So these two poles will come to the breakaway point. One goes up 
and uses the 60 degree asymptote. The other one goes down and it uses the negative 60 degree asymptote. Now following that, we can also specify the value of k at the breakaway point. Why do we care about the value of k at that specific point? Well, that is the transition between a overdamped and underdamped system. So the value of k at this point may be critical to some application. What is the value of k there? We know that the breakaway point is at negative 6.12. If you now evaluate our function p of s at s equals to negative 6.12, which is p of negative 6.12. This gives the value of p, which according to our definition here is the value of k at that specific point, at that specific, specific value of s. And this happens to be 416, which again is the value of k. So k here is 416. Now past 416, these real poles become complex conjugate numbers and the system transitions from a overdamped to an underdamped system. Now the poles are following the 60 degree asymptotes and they may cross into the imaginary axis at these two points. What is the value of k at those two points? Well, this is not part of the problem, but we can calculate them just for amusement purposes using the Routh Hurwitz stability criterion. Let's do that. To use the Routh Hurwitz stability criterion, we need to rearrange this expression. This can be rearranged as s to the power of 3 plus 50s squared plus 500s plus 100 plus k equals to 0. Now that we have the expression in this form, which again is the characteristic equation, we can build the routh hurwitz array. We're starting with s to the power of 3 and going down to s to the power of 0. The first coefficient is 1, the second one is 50, 500, 100, plus k is the coefficient of s to the power of 0. This value here, let's call that a, we will determine that later. This value here will be 0, and because this value is 0, then the value down here is 100 plus k, and the value there is 0 as well. What is A? A is the cross multiplication here, 100 plus K minus 25,000 divided by negative 50. Now, if you're looking for values of K that will bring this, the root locus to these two points, when you lie on the imaginary axis, we know that there in the routh hurwitz array is characterized by a row that it has only zeros in it. So if A is 0, then we are located on the imaginary axis. If 100 plus K is 0, then you are also on the imaginary axis. If you solve for 100 plus K equals to 0, the value of K to satisfy that is negative 100. This is not part of a root locus because the root locus goes from 0, K equals to 0, to K tending to infinity. So this value of negative K is not of interest. Now let's set a to 0. If a to 0, we have a row of zeros here. If a equals to 0, we can now solve for k. We have 100, k, 100 plus k equals to 25,000. k equals to 24,900. If k is 24,900, a is 0. We have a row of zeros here, which means that we are placed on the real on the imaginary axis here k equals to 24 900 and we are here and here to summarize now if k is between 0 and 416 the poles are real numbers this is also a real number and we have a overdamped system when k equals to 416 we are placed right there at the breakaway point because the two poles are the same, the system is said to be critically damped. When k is greater than 416, but is smaller than 24,900, then the poles are now located along these lines, 
that will now have complex conjugate poles. And the system is said to be under damped. When k equals to 24,900, the system is marginally stable. And when k is greater than 24,900, the system is unstable.